like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we called death and grave? They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. Forever, your kingdom reigns. Reign over every. 
you are sovereign over us. You are sovereign over us. Let's be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Jesus, it's you we glorify. It's you we're lifting high. Your name be glorified. Be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Be high and lift it up. Bye. 
Father, and thank you, Lord, that as we that as we meet with you, that we are changed forever because of that encounter, because of that encounter with your your love, that our hearts are transformed. So Lord, I pray you continue to speak to us now, continue to meet with us, we pray. Welcome to Margaret's. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you, too, for those of you who are joining us online. Thank you, Will and Josh and Josh, uh, for leading us in worship. We'll be back to you quite soon. One of the things which happens in every institution, the city and the church, is once a year we have to produce all kinds of figures to show that we're viable. And it comes about this time of year when we have to say to the church, look, we're open for business. It's all right. Forget about us, always the best thing. And Cliff is going to come and tell us how we can show that we're viable. I mean, it's all very off the half board. I'd hate you to think the FCA equivalent is going to pounce. But uh, over to you, Cliff, because I know I just witter on. Never. Um, it's good to see you all. It's funny looking at you from this angle. I'm used to looking at the back of your heads. Uh, anyway, you look even more beautiful this way round. Um, yes, electoral roll form is very simple. We just need a little bit of information from you, name, email address, that's it really. And if you are online, I don't know which camera's live, uh, the form is available on the website as of about five minutes ago. So you just fill it out, click it, and we, it gets sent straight to us. You can fill it out with me at the end, or you could go online and fill it out now. That's it. If you, not right now, don't leave and do that now. Um, if you gave your email address a few weeks back when I wasn't here. Um, we need a little bit more information from you, so really need you to fill out one of these forms, not just an email address. That's it. I'll pass it back to Jeremy. Yes. You can begin to imagine who was looking after the forms on the day when, I, when they weren't filled in properly. And if you are, if you're regular, and I know there's something between 65 and 120 watchers most weeks on average, if you watch us every month or once a month, do fill in one of these forms on the website because we do, there's a special new thing which we have to fill in about how many are worshipping with us online and we'd love to know who you are so that, that'd be great as well now then our preach today josh is going to come in a minute but first of all bibi everyone's called josh this today uh bibi who isn't called josh of course is just, <laughs> is going to come and read from the scriptures to us
The reading today is from John 20, 24 to 31, which is on page 1029 of the Church Bibles. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Brilliant. Thank you so much. We all need assurance sometimes, don't we? I don't know if uh, you've ever been on a roller coaster, the assurance of the harness, or ever seen one of those clips where the person running the roller coaster pretends it's not working just as they drop down. That's very mean. Uh, I have children, they're constantly needing to be reassured uh, of, of the love that we have for them, especially when they've done something wrong, uh, wanting to know that it, it's still okay. Work feedback. I sent uh, an email earlier this week that I really, really, I really didn't do that well on it, to be honest. And I really wanted to have the reply to have the assurance that maybe it wasn't as bad as I'd originally thought. In marriage, in friendship, encouraging words of love to one another, assurers of our status with one another. We all need assurance sometimes, don't we? And uh, today we've read an account where Thomas is also in need of some assurance. Before we get to him, let's just set ourselves up in this passage. This is a week after the Easter week. It's a week after Jesus has died. And, and it's been a little bit bonkers. It's been a little bit of a mad one. And the women have seen him in the garden. The disciples have seen him in the upper room just before. But sadly, Thomas, poor guy, missed both times. Maybe he was at the shops. We're not told. We don't know. Either way, he has missed it. And in today's passage, eight days later, he does finally get to see Jesus. One of the 12, and the disciples have told him at the start of our passage today, we've seen Jesus. And the disciples believe Jesus to be Lord, the Son of God. And John's gospel is themed all around this point to try and understand who Jesus is and to believe and decide that Jesus is God and his resurrection, the proof of that. But Thomas replies to the disciples, unless I see the marks myself, how can I believe? And to be fair, I think a lot of us, when we read this, we go, come on, Thomas. But I'm not totally sure this is a, a come on, Thomas moment. I'm not totally sure that all of us wouldn't be sitting in Thomas's shoes because they're right in the midst of this. We get to come two and a half, whatever, 2,000 years later, read a gospel and see everything that's happened around it. But they're living this there and then. I'm not sure Thomas is a bad guy. I think he just wants to be assured. And I think that might be his thing. As you look through other times, we, we see how he is the spokesperson for slightly getting it wrong about Jesus going to the Father. But we also see Thomas as somebody who has an impressive loyalty and was resigned to saying, hey, Jesus, I'll go with you and I'll die. I'll go to Jerusalem with you and I'll die. But Thomas still needs a little assurance and maybe a little explanation as they're in, a, in the house, Thomas is there this time, not stuck somewhere else. The door's locked, and in comes Jesus, standing amongst them. The same greeting that he greets the disciples with first time, peace be with you, shalom, this all-encompassing peace. The same peace is then said again to Thomas, peace be with you. And he immediately says the things that Thomas has asked for. So he's obviously got the divine inspiration to know that's what Thomas needs. I want to put my hand on your side, and all of these kinds of things. But actually... Thomas doesn't do that. It's never recorded. We don't see it. We just see his response. But Jesus, in his kindness, he assures Thomas, it's me. I know what you need. I'm here. I live. And it's what he says to me and you as well today. 
Thomas replies, my Lord and my God. And it's the right response to living Jesus. My Lord and my God, it's recognizing Jesus to be who he says he is. And that hasn't changed today. Thomas is assured, assured that Jesus lives and assured that Jesus is Lord. Early church tradition says that Thomas would have been somebody who would have gone to India. There's records of him having planted churches and being part of churches growing in that area. And, and actually, he also records that he was martyred as well. And so I wonder whether Jesus, in his kindness, knew where he was going, how difficult it was going to be, and gave him a little bit of extra assurance, taking the gospel to a very challenging place at that time. Thomas put his faith into practice and died for it. And I wonder if, if he was more equipped for that because he had this moment with his Savior. You see, Jesus always equips those that he calls, and that's the same for us today as well. So where does this leave us? The disciples saw that Jesus lived and celebrated him as Lord. Thomas, just a little bit later, did exactly the same thing. And now we're told, verse 29, Jesus says, Because you see me, you've believed, but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And I read this story to my nine-year-old last week, and her words simply, she said, well, we need to believe without seeing, don't we? So that was quite black and white, quite helpful. She's right. And, and, and yes, when we recognize that, Jesus recognizes that too. That is the call for us. But it's not like we're getting nothing. Thomas is a character in the Gospel of John. We get to read it, and we get to read its words, and we get to say, speak to me, Holy Spirit, through your word. Help it come alive to me. Help me understand that and response to it. And it was the aim of the writer of this gospel is for us to know that Jesus lives and for us to know that Jesus is Lord, that he is the Son of God. And the, the last verse that we looked at it tells us exactly that. That's why the, the author wrote what he did. And it's the assurance. It's assurance. The assurance Thomas needed. The assurance I'm sure the disciples needed as they went off on mission. And the assurance we do as well as we live for Jesus. It changed everything. It changed it for Thomas, for his disciples, and for many, many Christians over the last 2,000 years have met Jesus, decided that he died and rose again, and decided to live for him, knowing this life in his name that we read about. And as I close, Jesus looks at each one of us and wants to remind us too. I am alive, I live, and I am Lord. And I wonder if in areas where we, where we doubt, where we worry, where we need assurance. If we remind ourselves of that truth that Jesus lives and that he is Lord, how do those things look alongside that truth? Are we willing to stop and take a moment and apply that truth to the situation that we are in, in work, with family, with personal doubt, with fears around what our world is like at the moment? Do we remember the truth and are we assured that he lives and that he is Lord? Amen. Great unknown, where feet may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, in oceans deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name. Keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Grace 
bounds in deepest waters, your sovereign hand will be my guide. Free me, fail, and fear surrounds me. You never fail, and you won't start now. Friends, as I was reflecting on Josh's words, uh, a great call for us to find words of assurance from the Lord. And can I just give you some assurance? I've been walking uh, with the Lord for quite a long time, and I need to give you a real powerful word of assurance. I am full of doubt. How do you like that? Someone once said, James, the opposite of faith is not doubt, it's certainty. And friends, the faith journey is filled with uncertainties. And if you're beating yourself up because of any doubts that you have, that is part of the journey. Be assured in that, and God knows it. And it's at those times when you just say, Lord God, I believe, help my unbelief. And we cry out to him and say, Lord God, I need words of assurance. I wish I could just tell you that constantly I had no doubts, but that is part of the journey. And I suspect that even if I had been in Thomas's shoes and seen the risen Lord, days, weeks, months, years later, I would have called some of that into question. So can I just invite you now, if any of you feel brave enough to say, I am walking a journey of faith, but it includes doubt, can I invite you to stand and we can pray over that? I want that doubt not only to be addressed, not removed, but to be affirmed as something that God knows and understands, and it's okay. Can we pray about that, if any of you feel so called? Father God, we give you such thanks for your words of love and assurance, but we confess to you, Father, that there are times in the journey when we have doubts. There are times when we have fears, we have anxiety. We confess that to you, Lord God, but we give you such thanks that in your divine understanding, you you know that, Lord God. It shall not be held against us. We invite you now to draw near to us, to address those doubts and those fears, and to come flooding in with the power of your love. Words of assurance, words of truth, that your son lives, he was indeed resurrected, and he lives in eternity, and he invites us to join him in that. And so, Lord God, I pray that if any of us are feeling doubt, that we wouldn't wear it as a sin or a punishment, but that we would release it to you, and that we would know that as we do, that your Holy Spirit will fill that void and come and give us words of assurance and love. And we pray for all these things by and through the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I'm going to be up front. If anyone else needs any prayer for anything at all, please do come forward. Spiritly, you have my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. My feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made strong in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet. Oh,
keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace I am yours, you are mine As I am yours, you are mine As I am yours, you are mine Oh, your love wave after wave crashes over me crashes over me for you are for us you are not against us champion of heaven you made a way for all to enter as your love Wave after wave crashes over me, crashes over me. For you are force, for you are not against us. Champion of heaven, you made a way for all to enter. preparing the talk I had a picture of a bridge and you know the phrase I'll cross that bridge when I come to it and I think for maybe a few in here that you've got to the bridge and you now have to cross it and it's something that's been coming up for a while maybe and there's a sense to which uh, I want to encourage you be assured Jesus he holds up the bridge but he also holds out his hand to walk across the bridge with you be assured that he is alive and that he is Lord as you take that step, as you cross that bridge that you've come to. So maybe respond in worship if you would value prayer. I'd love to pray with you if, that is, if that's you.
Yours is the glory. Yours is the
Christ, that you are wonderful, Lord. That you are worthy of our, our praise and our adoration. So pray, Lord, that, that we would know you with us. As we go from this place, Father, that we would know that you do not leave us, that you do not reside in the church building, Father, but you live in our hearts. assurance that you know us, you love us, and you're with us.